boxing is one of the most exciting yet unpredictable sports. Everything can change in the blink of an eye with a perfectly timed punch. The sweet science has produced some of the most epic battles that lasted for several rounds, as well as others that ended as quickly as they started. So in today's video, we're going to look at some of the most exciting and fastest finishes in boxing. Keep watching and don't blink as we bring you the top 10 fastest knockouts in boxing history. Gerald McLellan made the first defense of his WBC middleweight title against Jay Bell in August 1993. He became the WBC middleweight champion after stopping Julian Jackson three months earlier. This is round one scheduled for 12 for the WBC middleweight championship. Jay Bell in the white trunks. He's the challenger, and the trunk gold is the champion, Gerald McClellan. Bell, a former defensive captain. McClellan only needed 20 seconds to put the challenger on the canvas. Honor student. And look at this! A big left hook to the body, right in the solar plexus, it appeared to me. Jay Bell is sprawled he out is, on the canvas. He cannot move. That's a shot right to the solar plexus that stopped you. He either cracked the rib or he cannot move. McClellan successfully defended the title two more times before losing it and ending his boxing career prematurely. In March 1996, 23-year-old David Tua challenged John Ruiz for the WBC International Heavyweight title. Tua was one of the most fearsome boxers with devastating punching power. He came into the fight with a perfect record of 22-0, with most of the wins coming by way of knockout. Ruiz was making the first defense of the title since winning it in 1995. And John Ruiz, 225. Tua went after the champion from the opening bell and unleashed his fury, scoring a brutal knockout only 19 seconds into the fight. At the count of five, and David Tua, as advertised, the left hook. Tua burst onto the world stage after this victory. He defended the WBC title three times before losing to Ike Ibiabuchi in 1997. He then unsuccessfully challenged for the unified world heavyweight title against Lennox Lewis in 2000. However, Ruiz recovered from the loss and went on to beat Evander Holyfield in their second meeting to capture the WBA heavyweight title. Two young undefeated super middleweight prospects, Alan Green and Jaden Codrington, met in November 2005. Green came into the bout with a record of 17 wins, with 11 of them coming by way of knockout while Kodrick did at a perfect record of nine wins, all by way of knockout. Alan Sweetness Green, black and gold. Both boxers met at the center of the ring, looking to unload, but it was Green who landed first. And here's Green, he promised to go inside. Green scored a devastating knockout in only 18 seconds of the first round. He said he'd be aggressive from the start. I didn't believe him. He proved uh, what he said he meant. He absolutely devoured the New Yorker, Jadon Codrington, on the ground. Now, let's listen in. For Alan Sweetness Green. Daniel Jimenez made the fourth defense of his WBA World Super Bantamweight title against Harold Geyer in September 1994. Geyer came into the fight with a perfect record of 20-0 and was aiming to become the first world champion from Austria. 
Aber das hat natürlich an Gefährlichkeit verloren. Bei den Tagen von Mohamed Ali. Jimenez ernennt sie auch gerne die Cobra. Und der möchte Harry Geier nun die Gipfelzähne ziehen. However, Jimenez needed only 17 seconds to put Geier out cold on the canvas. Und da ein Niederschlag, direkt ein harter Treffer an den Kernwinkel von Harry Geier. Und oh, das sieht ganz schlecht aus. Harry Geier, er kommt nicht mehr auf die Beine. Ich glaube, der Kampf ist aus. Er fällt wieder um. Der Kampf ist vorbei. Das ist ein tragisches Ende für den jungen 21-jährigen Österreicher, der sich so hart auf diesen Kampf vorbereitet hat. Aber viele haben gesagt, Harry Geier, er hat ein Glaskinn. Er muss aufpassen, dass er die harten Schläge nicht einsteckt. Und jetzt ist der Kampf vorbei, bevor er eigentlich begonnen hat. This victory established the quickest knockout in a championship fight. Jimenez lost the title in his next defense against Marco Antonio Barrera in 1995, but he moved down in weight and defeated WBO bantamweight title holder Alfred Cody by decision. Nigel Benn, the Dark Destroyer, was in the early stages of his career when he faced Ian Chandler in November 1987. Benn who is known for his formidable punching power and aggressive fighting style, had quickly compiled a perfect record of 10-0 all by way of knockout. Veteran journeyman Ian Chandler with 41 fights to his credit with 22 wins was expected to give Ben a run for his money. However, the Dark Destroyer responded swiftly with one of the most vicious knockouts of his career in 16 seconds. Ben would go on to win world titles in two divisions. He won the WBO middleweight title in 1990 and the WBC super middleweight title in 1992. Next, we have the fight between Jimmy Thunder and Crawford Grimsley in March 1997. Coming into this fight, Thunder had a record of 31 wins and 7 losses, but his opponent Grimsley entered the fight with a record of 20 wins with 18 knockouts and a sole loss to George Foreman four months prior. Immediately after the bell rang, Thunder connected with a perfectly timed counterpunch that sent Grimsley to the canvas and out. Knockout. And now The result was totally unexpected as Grimsley had gone the distance with Foreman in his last fight. Here's what happened. Boom, no, right on the in a fight. Don't go out there and mess around. Karak dragging the jab back. Look how relaxed Grimsley is all the way down. The man from down under, James Thunder. South African Zolani Teddy was already the WBO bantamweight champion when he faced fellow compatriot Sibonis Ogonia in November 2017. Teddy won the interim title against Arthur Villanueva in April 2017, but was then elevated to full title holder when Marlon Tapalis, then previous title holder, was stripped of the title after failing to make weight the day before his title defense. However, Tede needed only one punch and 11 seconds to score a devastating knockout against Ganya. Oh, that's the reason why. Goodness me, first punch of the fight, and it's all over. He's knocked him unconscious. The fight is all over with the first punch of the fight. Extraordinary shot from Zolani Tete. Medical man straight into the ring. He has caught. Tede successfully defended the title two more times before losing it to John Riel Casimiro in 2019. Miel Fajardo of the Philippines squared off against Sarawut Thong of Thailand for the vacant Asian Boxing Federation flyweight title in December 2022. It only took about 10 seconds for Fajardo to land the only punch in the fight 
sending GM Thong crashing to the canvas. In 1996, Jeremy Williams and Arthur Weathers met in a scheduled 10-round heavyweight bout. Williams was a fine knockout artist who had nine straight knockouts coming into this fight, but no one predicted what was going to happen. The two fighters met in the center of the ring and attempted to exchange shots, but it was Williams who landed first. Once he makes it to the top and gets a shot, Weathers was sent crashing to the canvas and the fight was over in just 10 seconds. In June 2007, Phil Williams made his fourth appearance as a professional against Brandon Burke. Man is always about the wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> it was appropriate. It was. Immediately after the opening bell, Burke charged at Williams, but he was knocked out by the first punch. One draw. And a heck of a looking ring attire and we're underway. Here we go. Oh, oh he's right out of the gate. The fastest no, not. I've ever seen in my oh, life. My. The fight was over in 10 seconds and marked the biggest victory in Williams' career as he struggled at the championship level. Submitted to fight facts as the, perhaps the fastest knockout in boxing history. Here comes the charge. Here's the shot. Goodbye. Oh. Good afternoon, good evening, good night. Let's go up to the Minneapolis Bill the Drill Williams. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to tell us your favorite moment in the comments below.